calling to order the Monday, October 21st, 2019 regular meeting of the 37th Council of the City of Berkeley. Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll? Mayor Pro Tem Booker. Here. Councilman Blanchard. Here. Councilmember Hughes. Here. Councilmember Gavin. Here. Councilmember Tennant. Here. Councilmember Stedman. Here. Mayor Kirkup. Here. First order of business this evening is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Motion to approve. Support. Motion by Mayor Pro Tem with support from Council Member Gavin. Okay. Are there any additions or corrections? Okay, seeing none, uh, Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll? Blanchard? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Tennant? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Kirkup? Yes. Uh, at this time, <coughs> please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the pledge. With us today is Pastor Matt Bruner. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this council. Thank you for this opportunity for us as a city to come together and uh, discuss the future of Berkeley. And I just pray that you would bless this time this evening uh, and watch over the discussion and uh, the decisions that are made and the decisions that are held off, and I just pray that all of it would be uh, by your will, and I uh, thank you for our, our city and uh, for um, just the wonderful community we have here in Berkeley. Thank you for our schools. Watch over uh, the teachers and the students um, and uh, help the teachers to uh, do a good job of um, raising our future generations in the schools, and I pray that you watch over the students as they attend the schools, that you would help them to uh, understand the importance of education and um, uh, really uh, dive into uh, the path to success. And um, Father, I know that uh, the um, elections are coming up soon. I pray that you watch over uh, that process as well. And um, whatever the results may be, I just pray that uh, you would watch over um, our future uh, city council and uh, help us to continue to grow as a community. So thank you for all of your blessings. Watch over us this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next up on our agenda is citizens' comments, when you may present your thoughts on issues that are not included on tonight's agenda. Council members will not engage you in discussion, but if your concern needs to be addressed by a member of city staff or department of the city, please sign your name uh, on the sheet provided on the clerk's table. You may speak on a specific agenda item while it is being considered. Uh, when you come to the microphone, please state your name and city of residence. Uh, James Jeffrey Tong, Berkeley, Michigan. We are almost to Veterans Day, November the 11th. And in honor of this day, and in honor of the Berkeley veterans who served in all of our wars, the Berkeley Historical Museum is preparing what I think truly is the most exciting display we have ever had. When World War II hit, many, many students immediately left Berkeley High School and enrolled. And others enrolled practically the day after they graduated. All through the war, records were kept of these young men and women. Uh, <coughs> Separate sheets were made for all of them. Wow. And the newspapers were clipped every day and these were kept up to date. We have 800 and some of these. Mm. Each one is a different story about a different person who went off to war. This sheet, for example, has the two Baroni brothers, Bruno and Joseph, and how they got out of school, one joined the army, one joined the navy. Both were wounded in the fight in France. Very often, we see that awful ending where the mother gets word that their son, daughter is not coming back. Uh, we are going to do a special display with dozens of these on display for people to look at, and we will have them all there in alphabetical order. So if anybody knows anybody from their family, uh, there's a lady here tonight. I was able to find a sheet in there with her uh, uncle on it. And I must admit, I was very moved. The first time I went through these, I found a sheet with my four uncles. And I knew them as a young man, but I never knew them 
you know, that they had served their country like that. I, the, the Berkeley Historical Museum, I want to remind people, is open Sundays 2 to 4, Wednesdays 1 to... 10 to 1. <laughs> 10 to 1. Uh, now, Veterans Day, on Monday, November the 11th, there will be a service at the War Memorial, which is right next to City Hall in front of the gazebo at 11 o'clock. The museum will be open before and after for people to come in, and there will be much more on display other than just these sheets. We have a uniform from World War II and a wide variety of newspaper articles and photos, all related to the people from Berkeley who served in this war. And I think we need to acknowledge that generation and what they did for us, and I hope a lot of people in Berkeley will turn out to see this display. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, good evening, Kurt Height, Berkeley. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago I came in and I was talking about the road diet and the evaluation process that is almost really non-existent. And, um, you know, I, I've been very uh, forthcoming. I've said I, I, I support every one of you guys' choices to at least want to test it. But I, I really feel that I, I have to, because I haven't said anything about it in so long, except for the two weeks ago, that I, I have to feel, express that I'm disappointed that more wasn't done after it, 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 it was started, regardless of the fact that the evaluation process was not hammered out, that it was not finalized. And, and, and I mean, to me, I felt, I, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed that whether it's once a month at every council meeting, whether it's in closing remarks or whether it's on the agenda, somebody's not asking Matt, and Matt's not here to find out from Matt, but how, where we stand on the evaluation process, what has been done on it, what has changed, because um, nothing's been done. Uh, they did, I heard they did the counts, what, three weeks ago. But the counts by themselves do not really show whether or not, they, they don't live up to the expectations of whether it was going to show an impact on whether or not it's having on the neighborhood. Now, to me, I believe the tools are still available to use those to go forward and to hammer out something. But in order for that to happen, somebody has to be willing to recognize that they're sitting up here, they have to give voice to the fact that it hasn't been done and we have to do something. I asked for a meeting to occur whether it's with the city manager, whether it's the representative of the DDA, the current representative, with uh, a, 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 so a neutral council person, and even with the mayor, that, that I feel that it should be very easy to hammer that out. I can, I can show where the current count, the counts that were done before the start of the evaluation, where they fall short. I can show what they failed to do. I can show, based on what was promised would happen, what should be counted where, whether it's the level of service for intersections, whether it's how to determine whether cars are going into the neighborhoods. There's all these things that, that myself, if I can do, that a multidisciplinary board should have had done in the two months prior to the start of the road diet. And I did this, I, I figured it all out in a week and a half after they started it, early. And, and uh, But instead, it, it started, and then, Instead of taking the evaluation process and put it on the back burner and somebody working on it, it was taken off the stove. And that's how I feel at this point. Because Matt wasn't mentioning it, and, and, and everybody else, they looked at the counts and said, you know, it's great that we got this, now we can start it. And the counts fell well short of what they promised they were gonna do. And to me, that falls on a city manager in part because he should have been planning, organizing, thinking about, is this doing what we're doing? what we want to do, is this going to give us the information? And no, it does not. And, and you know, I, I just feel that more needs to be done. I feel that regardless of how the election coming, regardless of whether it's going to pass, I feel that everybody that voted yes because they wanted to have the trial still should be involved in it after the election. Um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying anybody should be not reelected. I'm just saying regardless of how it happens. Even the people that are running for election, I feel, if they're interested in it and they want to be involved, they should be involved in it after the fact. I mean, I feel that the, the type of meeting that should happen is anybody that wants to have input on, on what, how it was being measured or what was done to the date, which was a joke, I, I feel that they should have input on that. And, and, and I mean, I said it before, I said as much as I could say you know, two weeks ago, but I just feel, I don't know if you realize this, but somebody was hit on Coolidge in the bike lane. There's been several or more near misses I said before the bike, last fall, before when they first talked about bike lanes, that they were dangerous. Don't put them there. Every, every other area seems to realize that these are not the type of ones that you want to do, and it was still done because they said it was an added benefit. I don't think somebody's life is an added, be uh, being at risk is an added benefit. There's not safe where they're located. A but we don't even have an evaluation process. So 
we're at the six month point right now. We're at the point where somebody should have said, hey, is this living up to expectations? We don't even know what the expectations are. We don't. And it's, 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 it's not fair to the residents because it's not that hard to hammer these things out. It, it really isn't. The, all the data existed on previous traffic studies that you could take and you can apply it going forward. If I can do that, if I can figure it out, the multidisciplinary board should have figured it out. My feeling is they were never concerned about doing it and nobody ever held them accountable. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Wendy Zabramski, Berkeley. Um, Dan, you promised us when this road diet took place, if it came down to a matter of safety, you would yank it immediately. Okay, now somebody's been hit. What is it gonna take, a death? It'll be on your shoulders because I am, s I'm sorry to be that well, blunt. Wendy, all right. I'm sorry to Come be on. that blunt. No, let me finish. No, it's my I'm not going to let you finish when you're uh, uh, saying comments like that. I have no problem with you speaking, Wendy. None at all in, in sharing your point of view. But to call. But you're letting this go on okay. and on, right. and you're not evaluating it like you should, okay. and stopping it. Okay, thank you. Hello, I'm Jenny Beyer. I live in Huntington Woods, and I'm your community outreach uh, position for Congressman Levin, who is the representative here in Berkeley. I want to say hello to the council and introduce myself to the folks in the room. Um, my role is to hear about events, like what you're having at the Historical Society, things like that, that you want our office to know about, where you'd like the congressman to come out. We you know, want to be a part of the community and also to say hello to the council, let you all know what we're doing in the office right now. I want to make the rounds to our local communities to let you know that the congressman is following the situation with the lead levels in water being reported in many homes in Oakland County and our DC staff is working with the Appropriations Committee to see how we can support local communities in the replacement of those lines. So please keep our office informed of what's happening and how we can be supportive of you and your efforts to keep all of our families safe in their homes and with their water. Um, he is a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee and on this last recess he took a trip to Bangladesh where he was uh, visiting workers who are working in ready-to-wear garment, um, in the ready-to-wear garment industry where they're exporting lots of goods around the world and these workers are working to collectively organize and um, he's fighting for the standard of living for folks here in Michigan and all around the world and he also visited um, Rohingya refugee camps, was looking at how our foreign aid is assisting in malnutrition and to help those really devastated by the um, by the conflict with Burma and he's also vice chair of the Education and Labor Committee the, uh, last week they marked up HR 3 which is the um, speaker of the house prescription drug reform package and it would have Medicare negotiate drug prices and he shared his story of his son's treatment of chronic illness it's on our Facebook page if you haven't watched it it's quite moving I'm a mom I teared up relating to that um, experience and he's fighting for all of our families to make sure that we have reasonable um, control over drug prices his colleagues in that committee also introduced the College Affordability Act, which would hold the administration accountable on student loans and um, would also uh, help us to make college more affordable, such as two years of free community college and then further assistance continuing on to four-year educational facilities. Um, so we have a workforce development event coming up next month. You can subscribe to our newsletter and check out our Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, all of those to follow what's happening with our events. The address is andylevin.house.gov. You can always call our Warren office. Uh, the number is 586-498-7122. And again, my name's Jenny, and my email is jenny.byer, B-Y-E-R, at mail.house.gov if you need to reach out to our office. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Good evening, City Council. My name is Zach Barnhart. I moved to Berkeley back in April. My house does not have an existing garage, but my wife and I knew there would be plenty of room to add a garage and new driveway to our house when we purchased it. We're currently in the process of trying to add on a driveway and have a garage built on our property. However, the recent grading and drainage ordinance has complicated the process. 
To begin, our contractor was ready to begin working nearly five weeks ago when we first found out about the grading plan had to be submitted and approved prior to work starting. Not only was it frustrating to find out it would take longer to get the work started, but we had to find a surveyor to perform the work in a timely fashion to pay more on top of the work that was being completed for the driveway and garage and also pay a $1,500 escrow to the city to review the grading plan. This lengthened the project and the additional money paid to the surveyor and city nearly nullifies the added value of a new driveway and new garage. The work has yet to start on our property and we are still awaiting approval for the grading plan. It has been a week and a half, but I was told this process could take up to a month despite being told by the building department it should take a maximum of two weeks. We are hoping that the reviewer can meet the expected two week deadline as colder weather is nearing, which will further lengthen the project timeline. We have been disappointed in the lack of communication in the approval of this ordinance as this ordinance is not mentioned in the garage permit uh, or it's also not mentioned anywhere around the garage permit document or anywhere online around the permit. We would have tried to begin building sooner had we known the additional time required to get a grading plan performed, submitted, and approved. It appears that the grading and drainage ordinance was not well thought out or has been poorly executed due to the poor communication and longer than expected approval time. Tonight you have the chance to ease the pain of this process by speeding up the review process and lighten the cost to homeowners like my wife and I that are trying to improve their living space for themselves and for future owners. We encourage you to listen and agree to the suggestions brought to you tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Barnhart, have you signed in yet? I've, I've not, no. Please sign in so we can make sure that we can get back with you, thank you. Okay, seeing nobody else running up to the microphone, we will close citizens' comments and move on to our order of business for the evening. Uh, first is our consent agenda. Ms. Mitchell, would you please read the items on tonight's consent agenda? Approval of the minutes, matter of approving the minutes of the 37th City Council meeting on Monday, October 7th, 2019. Warrant, matter of approving warrant number 1343. Resolution number R-29-19, matter of adopting a resolution recognizing David Milner. Resolution number R-3019, matter of adopting a resolution recognizing the month of October as Berkeley Area Chamber of Commerce Month. Resolution number R3119, matter of adopting a resolution accepting a donation from the Berkeley Hoops Youth Basketball Association. Motion number M8319, matter of authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with Oakland County to provide animal care services for the city of Berkeley effective October 1st, 2019 through September 30th, 2022. Ordinance number 01219, second reading of a zoning ordinance of the City Council of the City of Berkeley, Michigan to amend section 138-551 of chapter 138 zoning to change zoning ordinance violations of the chapter from misdemeanors to municipal civil infractions. In ordinance number 01319, second reading of the City Council of the City of Berkeley, Michigan to amend sections 26 33 30-112, 30-105, 74-1, 82-362, 94-15, 126-49, and 130-35, and to add sections 26-2, 86-69, 126-27 and 130-80 to change violations of vacant and neglected property restriction requirements, business license requirements, operating a valet parking service without a license, assisting minors to violate curfew, noise, building code, water and sewer systems, trees, shrubs and bushes, noxious weeds, use of parks and sign regulations from misdemeanors to municipal civil infractions. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? Motion to approve. Support. Motion approved by Council Member Hennon with support from Council Member Stedman. 
Are there any corrections or additions? Seeing none, Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll on tonight's consent agenda? Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennan? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Consent agenda has <coughs> passed. We now move on to our regular agenda. Ms. Mitchell, would you please read uh, <coughs> item number one on our regular agenda? Recognitions presentations, matter of any recognitions or presentations from the consent agenda. All right. So our first uh, resolution today will be uh, recognizing David Milner, and I've asked Mayor Pro Tem Baker uh, if you would please read it. Excellent. Thank you very much, Your Honor. And, uh, and as we prepare for this, uh, would uh, uh, Nicita and folks from the uh, Historical Committee, as you're comfortable and able, please come up to the, to the podium. Thank you. A resolution of the Council of the City of Berkeley, Michigan, recognizing the many contributions of David Milner to the City of Berkeley during his lifetime. Whereas David Milner was born on July 21st, 1939 at, 80, at 3801 Gardner in Berkeley to parents Jack and Roberta Milner, David and his older sister Nicita became the third generation of Berkeley residents in the Milner family. and. Whereas, in 1945, the Milner family moved to 2233 Earlmont. This would remain David's home for the next 74 years until his passing on September 15, 2019, at the age of 80. And, whereas, being raised in Berkeley, David began his schooling at Berkeley Elementary School and eventually graduated from Berkeley High School in 1957. And, whereas, David remained active with Berkeley Schools as a longtime member of the Alumni Association where he served as treasurer, vice chair, and chair, all while helping to plan dozens of high school reunions. And whereas, David served his country admirably in the United States Navy. And whereas, David not only made his home in Berkeley, he was also a member of Berkeley's First Methodist Church and worked at several Berkeley businesses including Holland Hardware, John R. Lumber, and Kids and Stuff. And whereas, Berkeley was, uh, David was dedicated to preserving Berkeley's history. He served on both the Berkeley Historical Society and the Berkeley Historical Committee. And whereas, as a member of the Berkeley Historical Committee, he proved to be one of the committee's hardest workers, one who could always be counted on when help was needed for the various community events in which the committee participated, and for staffing the museum, often filling in for others, and offering to help even when he was not scheduled. And now, therefore, the City of Berkeley resolves that the, city of, that the, uh, that the Council of the City of Berkeley, Michigan, on behalf of all local residents, recognizes the many contributions of Mr. David Milner to the City of Berkeley during his lifetime. David will always be remembered by his friends and neighbors as eager, enthusiastic, thoughtful, and sociable. His warmth will be missed. The City Council is grateful for this opportunity to join with the family and the many friends of Mr. David Milner to honor an individual who has truly understood the beauty of life and the value of serving one's community. May he forever serve as an example to all Berkeley residents. Introduced and passed at a regular city council meeting on Monday, October 21st, 2019. Daniel J. Turbrack, Mayor. Would you like to, to come on, I'll take it down. Take yeah, it down. I'll, I'll bring it to you, I'll yeah, bring it take, to you. Take it down. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, I'm sure his parents would be really proud. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Sue Richardson, chair of the Berkeley Historical Committee. Um, sadly, I knew David a very short time, for about two and a half years while he was on the committee, uh, but I grew to really love him because he was such a dear person, and as the resolution says, he was always willing to help, you know, he, and he always had a smile on his face. So even when I visited him in the hospital, you know, he always looked cheerful, you know, always had a joke. Uh, so we'll, we'll miss him uh, as a committee member, but even more as a friend. Uh, and I'm honored to have called him my friend. So thank you very much for recognizing him. Thank you, Sue. He certainly <coughs> will be missed, um, not only in the historical committee, but in the, in the city. And thank you for being here, Nasita, today to um, receive this and allow us to give him a chance to, uh, to honor everything that he's done for our community. Um, with that, we'll move on to our uh, next resolution. And this is R3019, uh, recognizing the month of October as Berkeley Chamber of Commerce Month, and I've asked Council Member Blanchard to read it. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to call up the Executive Director of the Council, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Executive Director of the Chamber, and the President of the Chamber, uh, Darlene Rothman and Nicole Miller. The resolution of the Council of the City of Berkeley, Michigan recognizes the month of October as Berkeley Area Chamber of Commerce Month. Whereas the Berkeley Area Chamber of Commerce works with the Berkeley Area businesses, business community to advance the civic, economic, personal, social, and cultural systems of our area, and whereas the Berkeley Chamber of Commerce has contributed to the prote <coughs> protection of commerce and the Berkeley business climate for 35 years since its incorporation, and whereas the Berkeley Area Chamber of Commerce, under the guidance of their board of directors, works to promote the region's business community through education, information, and the many networking and training opportunities that are developed by the chamber, and whereas the Berkeley Area Chamber of Commerce and its members provide citizens with a strong business environment that increases employment, the retail trade, and commerce, and business growth in order to make the city of Berkeley a better place to live. And whereas the Berkeley Area Chamber of Commerce supports the municipalities by hosting the State of the Cities event that provides updates from the City of Berkeley, the City of Huntington Woods, the Berkeley School District, the Downtown Development Authority, and the Chamber to its citizens. And whereas the Berkeley, <coughs> the Berkeley Cha Area Chamber of Commerce encourages the growth of existing services and commercial firms and encourage, encourages new firms and individuals to locate in the city of Berkeley. And whereas the Berkeley Area Chamber of Commerce is supported by the financial and volunteer resources of over 150 small and medium-sized businesses located and operating in the Berkeley and Huntington Woods area. And now therefore the city of Berkeley resolves that the Council of the City of Berkeley hereby proclaims <coughs> October 2019 as Berkeley Area Chamber of Commerce Month in Berkeley, Michigan. Introduced and passed at a regular city council meeting on Monday, October 21st, 2019, Daniel J. Trubrick, Mayor. Come on up, ladies. Come on up. <laughs> for all you do for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Good job. Sure. Oh, hit everybody. Sure. Hit everybody. Yeah. Keep, <laughs> keep working. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll go over here. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you again. Um, I think it's remarkable to be recognized by the city and the council for um, really just doing what we love to do and really supporting the businesses. We are grateful for Jack to be our representative. He comes to almost every meeting and he's a great representative for the city council and comes to the chamber board meetings. And it's great to have that relationship and that communication open. So Darlene, I know you meet with Matt on a regular basis. So mm -hmm. we really hope to uh, foster our relationship together and, and just grow the businesses in the city. Thank you, Nicole. Darlene, anything else you wanna add in there? Nicole pretty much said it all. I mean, we have a great relationship with the community and the business community and really the support of everyone here in the room. 
and it's, as I say, we're all playing in the same sandbox, mm -hmm. and it really does show because the support goes back and forth, and we are seeing the business community continue to grow and bringing new businesses here, and that is just important to everyone, the residents, the community, the businesses, and we thank you for your continued support. Thanks. Thank you both. And thank you to all the residents too. Thank you for saying that in the community, everyone here, and I mean, I mean, Berkeley, I think everybody in this room knows how special Berkeley is. Mm -hmm. So we're just grateful to be here. Thank you both and congratulations. Thank you. And resolution R3119, I've asked council member Dean to read that. And I know we have some representatives from the hoops here. I don't know if Pete, Scott, if you guys want to come up here, come on up to the microphone before. Okay. A resolution of the Council of the City of Berkeley, Michigan, accepting a donation from the Berkeley Hoops Youth Basketball Association. Whereas the City of Berkeley Parks and Recreation Department is accepting a donation from the Berkeley Hoops Youth Basketball Association. And whereas the Berkeley Hoops donated new poles, backboards, and rims for the basketball court located at Angel Elementary School. And whereas this donation greatly improves not only the appearance, but the functionality and use of the court for all who wish to play. And now therefore the City of Berkeley resolves, section one, that the City Council of the City of Berkeley accept the generous donation made by the Berkeley Hoops Youth Basketball Association and section two, the Parks and Recreation Department and City Council are extremely grateful for all that the Hoops organization does for area kids and for enhancing recreation in Berkeley. Introduced and passed at a regular City Council meeting on Monday, October the 21st, 2019, Daniel J. Turbrack, Mayor. Thank you. Come on, all right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for all you do. We appreciate that. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Trading places, Thank you. huh? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you for everything. We appreciate what you do. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, if, if I may, uh, I'd also like to acknowledge the efforts of the Department of Public Works in their efforts to get the hoops installed. They look fantastic, nice. thanks to them. Uh, I was visiting them there as they were installing them on a very, very hot, sunny day. It was uh, a, a job that I wouldn't have wanted to do, so much appreciation <laughs> to them. Um, additionally, it's, it's our pleasure, as we have a growing basketball league within <coughs> the Berkeley School District, we are at, uh, we'll be at a little under 600 registrants <coughs> for this season, which is up significantly from the prior year, which is up significantly from the yeah. year prior to that. We continue to grow. As we grow and we find a uh, budget surplus, we would like to continue on an annual basis to make a similar donation if you'll have it. Um, to, yes. that end, <laughs> uh -huh. to that end, we just look for uh, the feedback from Teresa and Parks and Rec, from the schools, of where additional hoops could go. Where we see, as I live across the street from Angel, I have seen every single day since those hoops have been up, countless kids, K through 12, parents, other community members coming and playing. They are the courts, so long as the weather cooperates, which today wasn't a great day for that, <laughs> but when the weather cooperates, those courts are filled with people. Uh, it's exactly what we had envisioned when we wanted to make this donation. We hope we can spread that around to other areas of Berkeley. So we'll continue to work with you if that's okay, Teresa, <laughs> in, yes, find yes. <laughs> in finding other locations where uh, ideally each spring we can help make a donation nice. to okay, accommodate that. You. Scott, anything else? Yeah, I just wanted to say that, you know, I've, I've been a part of Berkeley Hoops for a very long time, and I'm just very proud that pre the Pete shows that we really need new voices to, to come into youth sports, because if he wouldn't have come in and had this great idea, we wouldn't have this tremendous project. So I, I just want, Pete, thank you so much. I think it's a, it's a great idea. It makes me feel like, why didn't we do this much, <laughs> you know, much sooner? But yeah, we want to keep improving Berkeley with these outdoor courts, because it shouldn't be so hard for kids to have a really nice place to go play basketball. Uh, so yeah, so thank you, Pete, and thank, thank all of you. Thank well, you. thank you both for everything that you do, not only for the Hoops program, but again, for uh, the kids in the community, and as you mentioned, K to 12, parents, everybody that's out there in enjoying those hoops, 
Um, and yes, we we, we would probably take additional <laughs> thing, you know, donations <laughs> in the future if you guys <laughs> saw, saw to it. Um, but no, thank you in all uh, honesty for, for the incredible work you guys are doing. Our pleasure. Thank Thanks, you so everybody. Much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. We now move on to item number two on tonight's agenda. Presentation, matter of receiving a presentation from the Michigan Municipal League regarding the Elected Officials Academy. Ms. McCarlton, would you like to intro this? Yes, so Council Member Dean and Council Member Stedman have both received their level two awards through MML's Elected Officials Academy, the EOA. Um, we have two representatives from MML here to make a presentation uh, regarding that. I believe we have Kelly Warren from the Michigan Municipal League. She's the League Director for Membership and Affiliate Engagement. And um, Brenda Moore from SAGNA is the Mayor Pro Tem, the MML President and past EOA President. Um, I believe we are missing Monica Gallery. So. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. First, I'd like to thank you for allowing us the opportunity. This is not the norm. <laughs> I am the president of the Municipal League, and I told them that my job this year was going to be to travel from city to city, so thank you for allowing me to be at in your city. So I want to start off, hi Steve, I want to start off by saying to you a little bit about what the EOA is. It is a learning process for all elected officials. It's the educational process. We have four levels. I have all four levels. We have over, how many people? We got, I'm gonna say 8,000. I might be exaggerating a little bit. But out of 8,000 <laughs> individuals, okay. <laughs> no, I'd like to make numbers big. Y'all know how we do. Um, but anyways, I am the number 10th person to complete all of the levels. Was not hard, was not easy either, but it was fun because you have like four different levels and in the four levels you learn all about how and what we need to do as politicians. Not to say you don't know what to do, but it's always good to learn. It's always good to learn. So at this time, I'd like to present two awards. The first one is, excuse me, The first one is level one, the completion of the education award for Ms. Bridget Dean. Thank you. Yay. And the plaque just basically says that she has completed level one of the education award and is signed by executive director Dan Gil Gil Gillen. <laughs> the girls. Thank you so very much. You're so oh. welcome. And she also gets a pen. On my lapel is all of my achievements mm -hmm. for being into MML. I've only been in the organization for six years, and I just came in running. I didn't know anything. I came from being a bell bondsman, kicking in doors, <laughs> to actually now being the president of the Municipal League. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you, sweetie. Can I just say one thing? Um, so You're already there. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're already there. <laughs> so um, Brenda said she came in running. I'm going to say that she came in dancing because that's, you know, when she walked in, I was like, cue the music. Yeah. But I want to I thank both of you for being here. I want to thank the Michigan Municipal League for providing um, a framework for education for elected officials. I know that I've benefited greatly from that and um, I'm thrilled to have this, my level one completed, so thank you all very much. Thank you. She wasn't supposed to tell my secret. <laughs> I do. That's my trademark, kicking doors, dancing. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, now we have another award to an individual, and it's called our Leadership Award, which is level two. And this is for Miss Eileen Stressman. Stedman. Yep. You know names for you with me. <laughs> Good job, Eileen. Yeah. Eileen, you 
also it just is in a frame and it tells her that she completed level two of the leadership award a lot of these levels you probably already have but you just got to come and try us just come and study with us we also give her a pen as well <laughs> thank you so much Um, I would just like to say that, first of all, Steve Baker was, um, was uh, one, one of our uh, city, has been one of our city council members for s several years, and he went almost to the president's level. Um, he, was, he was extremely involved, and I think he was, a, he was um, an inspiration to all of us to get involved in all of these meetings and so on. So thank you, Steve. And Dennis is getting more involved. Everybody is involved in these meetings. So the rest of you really need to check your points in your <laughs> <laughs> You really do. Uh, because I'm sure that, um, that uh, a couple more of you do have what it requires to have the education award, even the new ones. Thank you. Thank you. So I actually did print out transcripts for those of you that are enrolled in the EOA so that you know where you stand. And for those of you that are not enrolled, I will be happy to enroll you when I get back to the office. Just let me know um, because you probably are halfway there. And I'd like to say too, Steve has been very involved. He was a board member for the Michigan Municipal League and on the Elected Officials Academy Board. And now Dennis is on our board. And most of you are enrolled in the program, so we appreciate all of you. And if you don't mind, I'll pass these out real quick, if I can. You just thank you. Yeah. I'll yeah, give them to you. Yeah, oh. perfect. Thank you. And once again, we want to thank you for allowing us the opportunity to come to Berkeley. <laughs> Never knew where you were, but now I know. Thank you so much. Thank you, well, thank you Kelly and Brenda, for, for coming out um, tonight and talking not only about the uh, levels of certification that some of our members have gotten, but again, just to reinforce how important the league is um, for elected officials <laughs> and the uh, education and continuing education is something that we can all strive for and is always going to be important. But thank you both for taking time to come and be with us today to present these awards. And we're probably going to see you in the future for a number of those too. So thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, we'll now move on to item number three on our agenda. Ms. Mitchell, would you please read that item? Resolution R3219, <coughs> matter of designating Saturday, December 7th, 2019, for the annual holiday parade and tree lighting ceremony in Berkeley. Is there a motion to approve R3219? Motion to approve. Support. Motion approved by Councilmember Dean with support from Mayor Pro Tem Baker. Ms. McCarlton. So this is one of the best days of the year that the entire city looks forward to. All departments have signed off on uh, this matter and I see Ms. Cindy Kuhn uh, here to speak on the matter. Welcome. Here I am once again this year, <laughs> um, chairman of the holiday parade and um, no longer an officer in the Berkeley Junior Women's Club, but I'm representing them also. I um, want to invite all of our council members and mayor to um, please participate in our annual holiday parade and our tree lighting uh, evening. Um, we have some exciting news that's come in. We brought back after a few years of it being gone, we will be having a trolley, okay, all day long. Uh, um, the downtown it'll be going through the downtown area it's just one trolley and it'll be and so we want to get all of the businesses on board so that maybe they'll have some specials going on and and just uh, make some make it a really special day I have talked with our DPW we are going to have close off Griffith between 12 mile and the alleyway there uh, so we can have a warming station so we can have a s'mores station so the kids can roast marshmallows and make s'mores. We also are lining up um, some other kids activities right there in the street. Uh, we need help. <laughs> I always need help. I have a lot of, I, I did have a, um, 
uh, meeting and I kind of called on everybody to please come out and try and help us. Everybody loves the parade. They want to bring their children to the parade and I get it. Um, but they are willing to help us beforehand, which is great, and we need a lot of hands beforehand. Um, but I also need a lot of hands the day of. Um, <coughs> Mayor, your dad's, w he was great I, at I helping. I got him out there, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, anybody, because I do need security um, behind when we're lining up the parade and everything. So if anybody, anybody would like to come out and help us, please, please, please. We also um, are going to be doing a quick little fundraiser at Blarney Stone Pub, a date to come. It's probably going to be mid-November sometime um, because we are a com completely, we're just run by the community and we want to see it keep going and so um, please come out and support us and help us out and so we can keep this uh, cool event going. Thank you. Well, Cindy, thank you not only for everything that you've done and continue to do um, for this parade, but also for coming and always just, you can sense your excitement whenever we, you talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> and we yes. Have called, we have called the, the guy in the big red suit. I I was, that was going to be my question, making sure we're scheduled for a landing from the North Pole. That yes. is obviously yes, very important. Yes, we are. Absolutely. Um, and yes, my dad's already you know, asked about it and that's, Sweet. yeah. So no, I, 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 I appreciate that. And again, um, it is. It, it, it takes a lot, of, a number of volunteers to make this event happen. It's always such a special event, and we always think about what happens while we're there, and, and when the big man finally comes, and the tree lighting, and that's all great. But it takes a lot to make that happen, and um, we do need as many volunteers as possible to help out that day, even just for as much time as, as you can spare to make sure that it continues to be a truly magical night um, for our community. Thank you so and much. And we will Cindy. have horse-drawn carriages again up and down Rosemont. Awesome. Um, which, uh, after you see uh, Santa, just stroll over to Rosemont and, you know, hop a ride. And it's, it's really neat because the residents up and down Rosemont really go all out and they decorate. And it's, it's really neat and nice. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just, yeah, I'm going to volunteer my husband. He just left, so that's <laughs> what he gets for walking out early. So he's happy to help day of. That's Whatever like, you need him to do. That's just like my husband. Yeah. I said, I, I understand that you're at this little cafe that's over there on Bowmile, <laughs> yes. but um, I can use you up until the event. So right. And yep. He does car things, so he's going to be doing sleigh stuff. So yeah. <laughs> Whatever you need him to do, just let me know. Great. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Cinda. All right. Is there. Or would you, Miss Mitchell, would you please call the roll, I should say. Dan. Oops. Gavin. Oops. Sorry, Oops. Jack. Oops. Oh, one second. Hold on. Stand before Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to clarify one thing. Uh, the 12 mile will be closed from 5 o'clock till 8 o'clock. And if you looked at the TCOs in the package, it, it looks like it could be closed all day from, from noon until 8. But the actual time for 12 mile closure <coughs> is 5 o'clock, and the parade is at 5.30. Correct, Cinda? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The just want to make sure everybody yeah, understood just that. Just 12 mile. Correct. 12. Yes. <coughs> all right. Thank you. We'll let you, well, you, you probably want to see if it passes first, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll? Gavin? Yes. Hennan? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Uh, let's move on to item number four on our agenda. Motion number M8419, matter of approval to purchase a used rear loader truck from Bell Equipment in the amount of $169,500 from Bell Equipment Company, Lake Orion, Michigan. The unit was publicly advertised and bid on the BidNet mitten system. The vehicle was identified in the 2019-2020 Capital Equipment Replacement Program. Funding is allocated under account number 226-528. Dash nine eight five dash zero zero zero. Is there a motion to approve M eighty four nineteen? Motion to approve. Support. <coughs> motion approved by Councilmember Blanchard with support from Councilmember Stedman. Ms. McCarlton. This is a budgeted item. Thank you, Mayor. And our <coughs> public works director, Derek Schuler, is here to speak on it. Good evening, Derek. Well, good evening. Uh, tonight we have a used rear loader for your approval. And this was a budgeted uh, line item, and this is a vehicle that we use for curbside leaf pickup, which is going to be getting started very shortly. So uh, it's a replacement vehicle. Um, many of our rear loaders uh, that we use for leaf collection are getting quite old, so it's been nice the last couple of years. We've, we've introduced two newer pieces of equipment. Again, this is a used rear loader. 
but it happens to be a 2019 unit uh, with a few of its warranties still in place, so we're excited to see that as well. So uh, we visited uh, where this truck is coming from, which is in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, our foreman took a look at the vehicle to give it a, a look over, and, and he liked what he saw, so we would like to move forward at this time. I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions? <coughs> oh, Passed? Oh, Passed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll skip all the technical questions then and just get to some logistical items. Um, if we were to move forward with this, what would be the approximate time of delivery and do we need any training involved or things like that? Uh, we won't need much training because it's very similar to the previous unit that we purchased and they're telling us, you know, a week or two um, and it could be even sooner. We're going to be quite eager to get it so I'll probably mm -hmm. be putting some notes, uh, pen to paper tomorrow and sending that authorization, but it, we should be able to get it fairly quick. Nice, and, and you mentioned in the memo that, um, that although this is a used uh, piece of equipment, you've done the appropriate testing and you're comfortable with um, it, it passing everything that we need to ensure that we can use this with confidence. Yes, and, and our previous experience buying one um, from Premier Truck out of Cleveland, Ohio was a positive experience, so that gave us a comfort level as well in making this purchase. And newer units like this rear loader are in that $200,000 range, so you feel like you're getting a, a car that's sort of just left the lot, yet still got a, life, a lot of life on it, and you're saving a significant amount of money in doing so. So uh, we're excited to move forward. Excellent. Seems like the, this time depreciation is our friend when it's just been out of the <laughs> lot just for a moment. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for our director? Okay, seeing none, thank you, uh, Derek, for <laughs> identifying this. You and Sean going down there and, and checking it out and bringing it to us this evening. Um, seeing no additional questions or comments, Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll? Hennen? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. We now move on to number five, Ms. Mitchell, please. <laughs> Motion number M8519, matter of approving the revised articles of incorporation for the Southeastern Oakland County Water Authority. Is there a motion to approve M8519? So moved. Support. Moved by Council Member Gavin with support from Council Member Hennen. Ms. McCarlton. I'm gonna allow Mr. Schuler and also we are joined by Jeff McKean, SACWA's general manager to speak on this item. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, Tonight before you are the amended articles of incorporation for SACWA, our water authority that we purchased bulk water from. Uh, this is an item that they've been working on for some time to clean up mainly a bunch of housekeeping type items. Uh, these articles have been, what was it, 1983, I think the last revision. So there were a handful of items which are outlined in your packet that, that were changed to modified with this agreement. Uh, Jeff and SACWA are going to all of the community's uh, council and board meetings to get their approval on moving forward with this. We've had our legal counsel review the document as well and offer uh, his approval, so uh, we're prepared to move forward at this time. And Jeff McKean from SACWA, uh, grateful that he joined us tonight, and uh, he certainly could answer any detailed questions you might have. Well, Jeff, thank you for being here. Is there anything you want to add? I wouldn't want you to feel like you came and didn't get an opportunity to speak to us. I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. <laughs> if, that, if that is the case, it's fine. Are, are there any questions, though, for either our director or for Mr. McKean? Councilmember Gavin. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a quick question. I think it was Article 4. Um, so what powers under the Enabling Act were not being used before that you kind of want, of want to employ now? We don't have any specific plans to do anything additional. It's just a question of making the articles as expansive as we could get them. Okay. We don't plan on making any changes to what we do right now, though. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for uh, for being here tonight and for helping um, keep your uh, keep your uh, uh, articles up to date and, and those kind of good things. Um, what's the ad adoption process? Are we um, one of the first on your list of communities that you're working through, or are we towards the end? Uh, where are um, you guys about at? About fifty percent. Halfway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We haven't haven't had any problems yet. <laughs> one of our issues is the articles have to be adopted verbatim by each community. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd encourage you not to make any changes. <laughs> You're missing a comma in <laughs> <laughs> paragraphs. I think we'll let that one flow this way. Uh. <laughs> nope. So we, we hope to be done within the next uh, 30 to 45 days. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no additional questions or comments, again, Mr. McKean, thank you for, for coming out My tonight. Pleasure. And thank you, Derek, for uh, helping to answer that question. 
Uh, Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll on M8519? Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennan? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Mitchell, would you please read item number six on tonight's agenda? Ordinance number 0919, matter of considering the first reading of an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Berkeley, Michigan, to amend Article 12, Residential Grading and Drainage Standards, to Chapter 26, Buildings and Building Regulations, of the City of Berkeley Code of Ordinances, to establish standards for residential grading and drainage, and to prescribe a penalty for violations. Is there a motion to approve 0919? Motion to approve. Support. Motion to approve by Council Member Hennon with support from Council Member Dean. Ms. McCarlton? So this was an item that came before you at our September meeting. Um, however, there were some changes, which is why it's before you again for a first reading. Our Community Development Director, Aaron Chaluto, is here to speak about that. Aaron, well, good evening. Good evening, thank you. Um, as uh, uh, Ms. McCarlton stated that this is coming back to you for a first reading due to um, some changes that I felt um, went beyond just a, a few minor revisions and I wanted to bring them back before you for a full first reading um, so that you could see them so they weren't um, missed. Um, specifically, a couple of the items in the contents page, which is on uh, page two, um, specifically with the design misdig uh, requirements. Um, those are something that was recommended by the city engineer and the DPW director just to make things a little bit easier and, and expedite uh, the misdig process. But the major issue that I wanted to address was uh, pertaining to the detached structures. Um, when it was presented before you last month, uh, it was noted that construction for any new detached accessory structure, such as a garage, um, would be required to um, submit a full grading plan and then be reviewed by HRC, uh, the City Engineering S Consulting Services. Um, based on um, feedback that we had been receiving from a number of our um, residents, um, they were um, having a hard time securing not only the grading plan, but then the review by the HRC uh, city engineer was taking an exorbitant amount of time in order for them to move forward with their process. Um, five, six, seven, eight weeks just for a simple garage. Um, based upon um, some discussions that I had not only with HRC, but with um, other surveyors, uh, a couple of other planners um, that I know independently, uh, we looked at uh, what it would be to revise the requirements so they would still submit the grading plan so that we would still see the change in elevation, the change in grade to make sure that the water, stormwater runoff didn't cause adverse um, effects upon adjacent property owners, but it would no longer have to go to HRC for city engineering review and approval. This would expedite the process and alleviate some of the financial burden onto our residents. Um, based on what we were looking at, um, the grading plans would be reviewed by the building official and the community development director, myself. Um, I have reviewed these plans um, in previous communities um, several times, so I feel very confident in what I would be looking at and seeing if there were stormwater runoff issues, being able to work with the homeowners to um, come up with stormwater management techniques that, they, that would be beneficial and also not be cost prohibitive. So those were the, the issues and the changes um, that are brought before you, and I'll have to take any questions. Uh, we obviously heard from uh, one resident today speaking on this, Mr. Barnhart. I'm sure we have his information so we can at least uh, reach out to him and right. make sure that we figure out what is going on there and, and make sure that we are certainly following um, the code and our ordinances, but also trying to expedite things as much as possible. It seems like that's been a, a bit arduous, and it seems like this is trying to start alleviating that moving forward. Um, steps at least in that direction. Not yes. specifically with that, but that type of situation. Right. And there are a couple of um, garages that we do have that are, we, we let the homeowners know that we were going to be coming before you with this change and they could either move forward with right, the process with as is or yeah, they could sure. wait. Right. So that's what has caused some, some, some delays. Okay. Uh, questions for our community development director on this first reading, uh, uh, additionally revised, but first reading of this ordinance? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for uh, for continuing to uh, to think very carefully and thoroughly about um, the kind of guidance and direction that we'd like to move with these uh, with these things, and to 
and to find the right, uh, the right balance um, with checks and balances and things to, to move these forward. If we were to move forward with this with little to no modifications, uh, for those that are kind of caught in the in the in-between here, uh, would they need to wait for the second reading or could we um, kind of help guide them through this, this um, intention uh, as the second reading comes before us uh, at our next meeting? Yes, well, that would be up to City Council and what we had done previously was Council had allowed um, city administration to go through um, building official myself and the city manager to review those plans that um, would be regulated by the new ordinance and be able to move forward it sooner but that would be directed by council right because we have first re reading 30 days right. um, and everything that's, that's what it would go into we, full want, effect, yeah, we, but we want to make sure we are right. continuing to move things forward especially as we get closer and closer to when you can no longer pour concrete or anything else because right. of the weather yeah so by council's direction, we could move forward with the plans if you're comfortable moving forward with them tonight. Okay, Councilmember Blanchard. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah. I think this uh, these changes preserve what we wanted to have in there and be able to control or, or know where the stormwater runoff is going, <coughs> but it does take a lot off the, the homeowner, and un unfortunately, we should have realized that earlier, but we didn't. So I think this is, is, is a good process, and I think that we should go ahead and if it passes tonight, then you should use the same process with the city manager and the community development director to allow these residents not to be held up, but to mm -hmm. be able to move forward and accomplish what they're trying to do before winter. Okay. Additional mm -hmm. questions or comments or thoughts on um, should we move forward allowing that? Councilmember Hennon? Yeah, so um, has this, uh, I, I am probably comfortable with us, you know, allowing it to go forward. Um, I'm. I think as we get more input from the community and the building community, you know, we keep getting a better and better ordinance. Th this has had the input of, you know, some members of the building community, you know, giving their feedback on how we can still preserve what we're looking for, but, you know, pointing out things that maybe we overlooked like we did the first time. Correct, yes. Okay, and then um, the uh, one question I have that you brought up is um, that yourself and the building official um, you know, would be comfortable reading the plans to, you know, without having the engineering review. Um, is that something that someone um, in your job position, anybody in that, with that qualification should be able to read those plans? Or is that something, you know, special that you have? I, I don't want to craft a law that's unique to your abilities. And then um, if, you know, 20 years down the line, okay. you know, yeah. you're not here. I'm still going to be here in 20 years. <laughs> Um, well, that would be something that the building official, um, he and I have talked about that, and so he feels comfortable with his knowledge, um, someone in his field with his background, um, whether it's, it's him specifically or someone, just a building official would have that. Someone in my background would be able to read um, a plan and see where the elevation changes and should be able to discern if the water is flowing in a certain direction, if it would be able to pool or, or if it would be able to, to be removed. And if there are questions or concerns, we can work with the homeowner about getting additional reviews if needed, or they would have to then put in a French drain. It's not just a, a cut and dry type of thing, but it's it, it alleviates the requirement of that third party review. Okay, I, I'm comfortable with this. Okay, thank you. You comfortable? Yeah. Council Member Dean? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Any additional questions or comments <coughs> on this? Hi, my name is Bramsky again. It's my next door neighbor and there is not a water issue back there so just so you feel comfortable with going forward with this one especially it's it's not an issue back there we weren't flooded in 14 or anything thank you okay um, <coughs> seeing no additional questions or comments and with the agreement that if this passes uh, after the vote we can begin to <coughs> make sure that everyone who um, Submits understands what the regulations and we'll be using these moving forward even though the process isn't completely finalized fair Okay, see a lot of heads nodding uh, miss Mitchell with that. Would you please call the roll on 0 0919? Baker yes Blanchard yes Dean yes Gavin yes Hennon yes Stedman yes Cherbrack yes uh, Ms. Mitchell, would you please read item number seven on tonight's agenda? Motion number M8619, matter of awarding a contract for Senior Home Chore Snow Removal Service to Expert Lawn and Snow, 21083 Mound Road, Warren, Michigan, 48091, 
for $3,500, which will be paid from account number 275-940-818-040, and the remaining funds will come from no, account number 614-105-818-000. Is there a motion to approve M8619? Motion to approve. Support. Motion approved by Council Member Dean with support from Council Member Hennen. Ms. McCarlton, you can throw this one to yourself. Great. <laughs> uh, so this is one of those um, programs that the city runs through the Community Development Block Grant Program, uh, the funds that we receive from the county. Um, we have received for the last several years a maximum of $3,500 uh, with how many homes uh, we have applied for the program. Uh, we are not able to take all homes that apply, um, unfortunately, given the amount that we receive, and we are still supplementing um, with the snowfalls that we have had over the last couple of winters, um, money from the Recreation Department, from uh, the city, uh, is having to put money forth. However, I think it's an important program to, you know, uh, remove snow from seniors who are our most vulnerable population um, from their homes so that they can, they're not housebound, so that they can get out of their homes. Um, we do evaluate and we do take the, the lowest income. Um, we take about 30 to 35 homes and I think it's a worthwhile program. Um, we have, over the last couple of years, been getting fewer and fewer bids, one or two. Um, not exactly sure what's to account for that. We've spoken to some people and it's a service that's a little different than plowing. Um, you know, someone actually has to go out there and get up to the homes and the porches and, and the driveway. Um, however, again, with without this service and the low cost that it provides to our seniors um, with their copays, they either have a five, 10 or a $15 copay, although last year we didn't have anyone with a $15 copay. Um, because we took those um, who would have the lowest amount. Um, we are taking applications uh, through November 5th, so if any seniors out there want to apply, um, they can call our office, 248-658-3470, to get an application, we'll send it to them, and then uh, they, can, they can mail it back to us. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for our Parks and Rec Director slash Interim City Manager this evening? Councilmember Blanchard. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I see that the, it's uh, $39 for a standard lot and $49 for a corner or double lot. How does that compare with last year? Yeah, last year for a standard lot, it was $24, and um, for a corner lot, I believe it was $39. So it's gone up substantially. Substantially, correct. Maybe one of the reasons people aren't applying for this job is the 20 pages of federal bureaucracy that they have to read and sign. Uh, I know we had to read it, and it was boring. <laughs> I would imagine that is what is one of the significant factors that's yeah. contributing anytime you're, you're dealing with the government there tends to be a little bit more red tape than just any normal type of, of service you were trying to provide. Um, and I also imagine that's why the costs are increasing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we have one and as, as Ms. McCarlton said, this is certainly um, an important service that we would like to continue to provide to, to those seniors in, in need. Uh, additional questions for Ms. McCarlton? No, okay, good job pulling uh, double duty on that one. Uh, Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll on M8619? Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennen? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Ms. Mitchell, would you please read item number eight on tonight's agenda? Motion number M8719. Matter of approving the appointment to the Beautification Advisory Committee. Is there a motion to approve M8719? Motion to approve. Support. support. Motion approved by Council Member Stedman with support from Council Member Dean. Ms. McCarlton? So there is one student member appointment for this uh, board. The student membership runs through October to coincide with the school year instead of our normal July uh, reappointments. Um, this student, uh, you can see from the packet, has a really strong application, uh, is very involved. Uh, I hope I will not mess up their name. I'm not sure if they're here, but Tasawar Rahman uh, is the student. And like I said, it looks like a very strong application. Is our student here today? Does not appear to be. Okay. Uh, yes, as Ms. McCarlton mentioned, it is a very complete and thorough um, 
application. Uh, this is a student member to the beautification committee in which there is a student member right now, but that student uh, does not appear would, is going to be able to continue uh, the responsibilities on the beautification committee. And luckily, we had a, another student who um, volunteered and submitted an application. Are there any additional questions or, or net, should say comments today with this item? Okay. Seeing, yes, it is a very uh, complex and complete resume. <laughs> is there a motion to approve M8719? Or sorry, Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll on M8719? Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennan? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Uh, thank you for your service in the beautif uh, beautification committee. Ms. Mitchell, I was not paying attention or I missed it. Who is up first today? Council Member Gavin. Council Member Gavin. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, not much to update on the committee front. Planning Commission uh, has not met since the last council meeting, nor has Environmental Advisory, nor has the Coolidge Highway Committee. Uh, for Planning Commission, the next meeting will be October 22nd at 7 p.m. here in the council chambers. Uh, for EAC, the Environmental Advisory Committee, the next meeting will be the 24th at 6.30 p.m. However, on October 26th, uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, at the Community Center parking lot, uh, there will be an Electronics Recycling Day in conjunction with Public Works, uh, Parks and Rec, uh, SACRA, the EAC, um, and so you can have things like laptops, monitors, printers, radios, fax, CD players, uh, TV scanners, power tools, phones, small appliances, all will be accepted. Um, and just a reminder that any personal or sensitive information needs to be removed beforehand, so soccer won't do that for you. So um, make sure to take care of that beforehand. Uh, and then the other thing, just to uh, uh, talk about a little bit, I had the pleasure of attending the MML conference, which I know, uh, you know was obviously a great one. Always a great chance to dive deep into those specific areas on subject matter facing the cities and certainly get the opportunity to collaborate with other elected officials uh, on what kind of best practices he can take back to our own cities. Um, really had some great sessions, one on organizational and employee well-being, on how people are sort of a, are a mix of different paradigms and how we can develop leaders who uh, not look at getting results but manage those who get results. Um, also attended a session on the Property Assessed Clean Energy Program, uh, which really took a deep dive into California's um, positives and pitfalls uh, that came along within uh, employing a residential PACE program. I uh, went to a session on civility and government and uh, how when we're having a conversation we need to start from sort of that a shared values perspective and, 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 um, and also kind of a, a similar core of belief uh, that we can all agree with at a baseline. Uh, there was a seminar on cybersecurity and then one on managing uh, pensions and OPEBs uh, that talked about asset allocation, economic and uh, investment forecasting, PA202 requirements from 2017. Uh, and the continual updates that come along with those uh, and strategies for managing uh, unfunded pension liability. So it was a lot of great information uh, and really enjoyed uh, getting the chance to sit in those seminars and also, like I said, collaborate with other elected officials. So thank you. Thank you. Council Member Hennan. Yes, uh, the ZBA uh, had no meeting in October. Uh, their next uh, meeting, uh, if one is needed, will be Tuesday, November 12th at 7 p.m. here in City Hall. And that's delayed one day from the usual uh, Monday because of Veterans Day. Um, likewise, the tree board also uh, meets on uh, that day, uh, again, delayed one day. Um, their last meeting, uh, they're working on a number of projects, but chief among them, they're um, making sure things are lined up so that uh, we can apply for grant money and uh, to help pay for some of the projects they're looking at and just to make sure all the ducks are in a row so that we have the best chance of, we, we fulfill all the requirements and have the best chance of getting those. I mean, one of the uh, projects they're looking at is a, a tree inventory. They were previously calling it a tree survey of all the public trees in the city. And they've done some really impressive work and research uh, on how to do this cost effectively and you know, on an outreach plan for uh, doing that. Um, I also have some notes from uh, the MML convention. Um, I was able to go a little early with the walking tour for the Detroit Riverfront. Um, it's uh, built and maintained by the Detroit River Walk Conservancy. And so while their project's much larger than anything we would ever tackle, you know, covering several miles of downtown Detroit's waterfront, there were a lot of parallels that um, I think we can take. And the big takeaway I took away was communicate, communicate, communicate. 
you know, they reach out to every PTA, every book club, every church group, just anybody they can. Um, and they'll go out and talk to their project and about their mission, no matter how big or small the group is. And they really feel that this kind of public outreach has been critical to th their success. Um, I went to a session on crowdfunding and rather than the traditional uh, like GoFundMe model where you're just donating money, um, the law in Michigan's changed so now they also allow investment-based uh, contributions. So for example, if someone came up with a really good business plan to reopen the Berkeley Theater, um, residents could invest in that and it's not a donation, you know, there's a risk, you could lose your money, but you are expected to get the money uh, returned, you know, and there should be a business plan and those sorts of things. So um, there was information about that. I went to a session on social media uh, put out by representatives from Holly and uh, our neighbor Ferndale. And a couple of the takeaways I took from there was that uh, Ferndale, for example, has found putting potentially bad news out there early, you know, and explaining why, you know, whatever the bad news is that's coming, you know, really helping soften the blow and helps people to understand and be more understanding. And then also that you need to go where the people are. Don't expect them to come to you. And when you're there, listen to what they're saying. You know, even, you know, some social media is known for all the negativity, but sometimes you've got to listen and see why are they saying that, try and figure out what the underlying reasons for their saying. Then finally, I went to a distracted driving one. Um, Mr. Baumgartner was also there, and it was more geared towards employee workforce than legislative. But, you know, I just wanted to share that they showed some absolutely terrifying and sobering videos of research subjects and how even simple distractions can lead to uh, catastrophic results. And uh, the real takeaway is how a lot of the technologies that we think will make us safer, mm. um, hands-free, uh, those sorts of things, um, using Siri, using Siri was a great example. Siri is so bad that you, <laughs> you end up so distracted, it is more dangerous <laughs> to use it than to put your hand on the phone. So. So just the message I wanted to leave is, is be careful, pay attention to what you're doing. It's, it's not worth reading that text message. Wait until you get home. So thank you. Thank you. Council Member Dean. Yes, I too had the pleasure of attending the Michigan Municipal League um, convention and my highlights are as follows. I attended the Michigan Women in Municipal Government luncheon and the speaker was Detroit City Council President Brenda Jones. And she talked to us about the importance of mentoring and giving back in our roles as um, public officials. My top three sessions are as follows. Um, the best practices in building and maintaining a domestic violence high risk response team. This is already in place in Farmington Hills and I know Chief Kane has come from there. So my, and, I've, and I've spoken with him about um, replicating that here in Berkeley and hopefully we'll be able to utilize what they've learned and the model that they're using to put in place here. Um, in a nutshell, it's important to have a multidisciplinary task force, not just your law enforcement, but um, public safety, somebody from the court, someone from Haven, which is um, located in Pontiac, and it stands for Help Against Violent, Violent Encounters Now, and then um, um, county prosecutors as well. And communication, again, to piggyback on what Council Member um, Hennon mentioned, communication is important between the multidisciplinary team as well as um, victim advocates, the court system itself. I do have a um, phone number for um, the domestic violence hotline and that is 1-800-799-7233. There's also a live chat feature on their website which is thehotline.org. And there is a way, the website can tell you how to erase your browsing history, um, or the, you, can, you can go to the website and, and it shows you that. Um, another session that I attended was developing a parks and rec asset management plan. And they talked about the importance of, importance of developing a detailed data-driven parks and rec asset management plan and how this plan can help us to understand and anticipate future expenses. And the ArcGIS um, software that the city already owns could be instrumental in um, developing that uh, list. The last um, workshop, and I, we, I attended a lot, but these are my top three, is human trafficking in your community. Basically, um, human trafficking is the second largest criminal enterprise in Michigan, eclipsed only by drugs. 
So um, the presenters talked about steps that local government can take to tackle trafficking in our community. And if you think it doesn't exist in communities like Berkeley, I'm here to tell you that it absolutely does. We all always think, oh, it's a big city thing. It is not. Um, these situations tend to happen where they perceive they can be under the radar. The National Human Trafficking Hotline is 888-373-7888. Is and um, I would encourage, hopefully we can, um, if we get the domestic violence ha um, task force up and running, I'm hoping it will dovetail into the human trafficking. And there's, there's trafficking for labor and sex. And so this kind of, um, if we can take a multidisciplinary approach with everything and educate our residents on what to look for, I think that that will be helpful. Um, on to Parks and Rec. Um, the Tale on the Trail Halloween edition is a collaboration with the library and that will take place on Thursday, October 24th at 6 p.m. at J.C. Park. Start times are staggered um, in 10 minute increments and we encourage costumes. Do you have anything to add to that? Did I, did I capture it all? No, oh, it's just such a cute event. I, I know, love it. it is. Yeah. Um, Boo Fest is Monday, October 28th. Again, multiple start times beginning at five o'clock and it's designed for children up through the fifth grade. Um, and you really should register, you know, like yesterday because space is limited, but you can do that by calling the Parks and Rec Department or berkeley.maxgalaxy.net. And vacation camp is on for election day, Tuesday, November 5th. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Just a couple quick updates as well. Uh, the Technology Advisory Committee met uh, last week's Wednesday, October 16th. Uh, one of their many uh, initiatives is to uh, do another round of outreach to the other um, excellent committees that we have uh, throughout this fair city of Berkeley. So uh, for those of you on the other committees, hopefully you will see uh, and hear from the technology advisory folks in the weeks uh, to come uh, to see how and in what ways we can apply technology to help you advance your specific missions and objectives. Uh, and their next scheduled meeting is on Wednesday, November 20th uh, at 6.30 p.m. The Downtown Development Authority uh, Board met two weeks ago on Wednesday, November 9th. Uh, one of the highlights of their agenda was to, um, to, to uh, interview and, and have a discussion about a potential candidate to uh, fill the executive director position. Uh, the board did um, in close session or in, in privacy after the candidate left, uh, it was open session, uh, agreed to, uh, to extend um, um, contract negotiations to the candidate. Uh, once those are underway and things, it'll go back to the DDA board uh, for their approval and then it would come to council as an expenditure item uh, for us to review as well. So we'll get a chance to, uh, to learn more about that, uh, the potential um, new DDA downtown director uh, in the weeks to come. Uh, kudos to those involved in the uh, fantastic mom's night out. As you can tell, I was more of, an ad a partic uh, more of a fan role in that night, uh, but uh, it was a, a terrific evening uh, last uh, Friday the 18th. Uh, great um, um, participation and, and turnout from folks and uh, the businesses uh, did well um, to help support and with all creative events and things. So uh, thanks to um, all the volunteers that helped make uh, Mom's Night Out such a great event. And for more info on upcoming events and activities, visit downtownberkeley.com. Uh, the historical committee, as we uh, heard at the onset of the meeting here this evening, um, a new veterans display will be coming soon. I really encourage you all to, uh, to take a little bit of time and come and check that out, either on Veterans Day, if that works with your schedule, or in uh, the other times in which the museum is open. Uh, Sundays from 2 to 4, and uh, Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, and there still is a chance to get um, the holiday mugs and the uh, holiday tree ornaments uh, that are on sale as well. All proceeds go to benefit the museum. Uh, so get yours while you can because they're selling fast. And finally, it was Maddie Stepaniak who once said, unity is strength. When there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. And so uh, I'll use that to talk about team teamwork and collaboration. To pivot a little bit, you might expect me to give an MML update as well. I'm really glad to, to, to see my friends uh, here tonight. Uh, and congratulations again to my colleagues on your tremendous progress through the, elect uh, the Officials Academy. Uh, so my curveball is that I'll talk just for a moment about SEMCOG. So uh, SEMCOG is the Southeast Michigan Council of Governments. It is a planning and coordination organization that supports uh, the seven counties in Southeast Michigan, representing over four million residents. Uh, they had their General Assembly last week's Thursday in Troy, and the keynote address 
uh, was from Brian Burnett, who's the mayor of Rochester Hills and was uh, recently appointed the president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. And so uh, in, that, um, um, in that event, uh, his keynote ad address uh, spoke about the value of local leadership. So again, the, the work that my colleagues are taking to, uh, to continue to, to learn and grow and, and bring about those leadership capabilities to uh, our community is, is amazing. Uh, and the three, key, the three key themes of their core commitment, which are uh, the three I's, innovation, inclusion, and infrastructure. And uh, as we know, innovation is gonna be a key to unlocking not only technology advancements, as we talked about earlier, but also thought advancements, right? So innovation, we typically think of shiny objects and you know, fancy technologies and things, but innovation is creating value by doing new things. And that may or may not require technology to do that. And so as we think about the ways in which we can innovate uh, within our community and across uh, our different committees and as a br gr broader region, there's such great opportunity to continue to find ways to innovate. Uh, inclusion, the second of the three I's, uh, talks about the, the strength that we have when we, when we rally around our diversity of experience and diversity of perspective and diversity of education and diversity of technical skills and diversity of, of uh, focus and passion. Bringing that together to help, help move our city and our region forward uh, is the second of the three key themes uh, that SEMCOG is, is driving. Uh, and then finally, infrastructure. Uh, obviously, uh, pun intended with the driving thing there. Uh, not only does that affect us here at the local level, uh, but also across the region as we've seen um, with many of the items that, that we're all dependent upon, uh, the infrastructure that, um, that makes day-to-day uh, -day living such a, um, hopefully such a pleasant experience for us all. So um, that was a brief um, update on the SEMCOG front. Uh, and now back to, I'm sure, uh, more updates on the MML side of the house. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, for your time. Thank you. Council Member Stedman. Um, I just uh, am going to give one update on the MML um, side of the house, uh, or the, the MML convention. And that is one of the most important things I took out of that is there is a census coming up. It is in 2020. People are being hired right now to do censuses. You can go online to the 2020 census and um, apply for a job if you'd like to do that. Um, the census, every person that counts means another few bucks for the city of Berkeley and the school district in the city of Berkeley. And, um, and our roads and everything that, everything that we do here. Uh, so it is very important that every single person is counted. Um, if if you want to be part of that, please apply for a job. We need. We um, initially they're going to send out um, um, forms that people can send in, and I believe it's just a short form. A very few people get the long form, but they'll send out forms first, and then um, and then w when with the forms that they don't get back, they'll call by phone or meet in person or so on. But it's just very important that everybody tell your neighbors, doesn't matter, we, they just wanna know how many people live in your house. And it's important for Berkeley to get the funds that we need to run our city that everybody is counted. Thank you for that. Um, okay, the Citizens Engagement Advisory Committee, I missed that one, the, the last one on October 2nd. Um, I was helping my daughter celebrate her birthday. Um, but um, they were discussing, again, the communication committee and finalizing that. And um, also the, the website. They've been working on looking at the city's website, comparing it to other websites in the area. And, um, and um, uh, seeing how we can improve ours to make it easier for our residents to act, uh, access it. Um, the beautification committee, um, they have done their cleanup plan. They are not having a holiday lights um, contest this year because the last couple of years, it has not, um, people have not been very enthusiastic about it. Nominations haven't come in. They have, um, Dan and Anella Mihiescu, have personally driven around the city of Berkeley looking for, um, for lights and uh, that, that would be worthy of an award. And so since it's not really a community event or it hasn't been for a couple of years, we're not going to have it. 
So in that case, they are not meeting again until March 11th, uh, beginning of planting season. So um, uh, anybody that still wants to be involved in the planning and cleaning up the city, beautifying the city, and um, bring some ideas for other projects they can have, March 11th at 6.30 in public safety, I think. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure, but you know, it could change. Um, the library, uh, again, please um, check the website. They offer wonderful programs. There's way too many to name. Um, now you'll be looking at just the ones for the end of October. There's some Halloween events coming up and, um, and the new November programs. So please look at the website. There's something for all ages. And that's all I have tonight, except make yourself counted in the census. Thank you. Councilmember Blanchard. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I too attended the <coughs> MML convention and I'll touch on three things like Councilmember Dean did, so I wanna go through the whole list here. It was, it was a great convention. Uh, I attended uh, the lobbying groups, uh, the budget from roads, budget to roads and everything in between, which was a very good analysis of where the uh, state process is on budgeting and what we can expect in the future. It was an excellent presentation. Uh, another one that I, I enjoyed was You've Been Breached, Cybersecurity <coughs> Actions in a Ransomware Attack. And we learned a lot there about what we should do and how to do it. And all the information that I've got has been forwarded to our Chief Innovation Officer so that he's, he's aware of it also and is working on some si updates to the cybersecurity plan. And the third one was uh, food trucks 101, what you need to know. And interesting thing was there, I walked in and there was four panelists sitting there and two of them were from Berkeley. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, oh, we got connections here. Uh, Petro from Republica uh -huh. and Joe Tangeri was on that team. So it was a very interesting thing. We got a lot of, a lot of good stuff out of that. So, and if we need, to need more, we know where to follow up. <laughs> Uh, since the MML convention, I've attended another uh, symposium. I attended the third annual Homeland Security Symposium uh, at Oakland Community College. And the, the five things that were on that are intelligent slash risk-based planning involving terrorist environment for mass gatherings, right, left, and incel, the violent uh, contemporary extremism, bioterrorism, 1918, the Sikh Temple Massacre, and the Ohio State University terrorist attack. We were briefed on all those. And what we got out of that was what from those events did law enforcement and emergency management do right? What did they do wrong? And what are their recommendations to make sure that everybody else's processes uh, handle a situation like this? So. And the last thing, if you, if you haven't got it yet, <coughs> The Chamber of Commerce has put out a, a magazine. It's being distributed this week. They printed 16,000 copies. They'll be going to every house in Berkeley, Huntington Woods, and some of the surrounding parts of Royal Oak. We're sneaking out there trying to get them to come and <laughs> shop in our city. Uh, it's long, I don't know how many pages, 110 pages, 112 pages. Uh, it'll be put out once a year, and it's got a lot of good reference material in it. So if you don't get one, let the Chamber know and they'll get you one. So use it and shop the local businesses. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Carlton. Uh, just an update tonight for the residents and for council uh, regarding the arena demolition. Uh, we're about 95% complete. There are two minor items that will be complete, uh, hopefully by the end of this week. Uh, thank the residents that live nearby for their patience. Um, but overall, the, the project went really, really well. Um, we did not hear from any residents regarding any issues or problems. In fact, we had a lot of people who brought their children or even older to watch as the process was happening. Uh, so we've been really happy with the work and um, hopefully we'll close out those two minor items this week. Thank you and thank you for <coughs> filling in today uh, for Mr. Baumgarten. Ms. Mitchell, do you have anything? I do. Um, oh, you might. <laughs> <laughs> Before our next meeting, there will be an election. It is November 5th. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. Sample ballots are available at the city clerk's office for anyone that's interested. Um, and I wanna let everyone know that we will be open, the city clerk's office will be open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturday, November 2nd. 
and that is to take care of any election needs. Um, for example, if someone wanted to pick up an absentee ballot or register to vote. And due to the passage of Proposal 18.3, we do have a couple of changes. There is now no reason absentee voting, so you do not need a reason to obtain an absentee ballot. So at this time, anyone can come in to the office and fill out an application and, and they will receive an absentee ballot. Also, you, um, any resident can register to vote through election day with proof of residency. And if any, anyone has questions, um, there's a list available at the city clerk's office of what is appropriate proof of residency or um, anyone with any questions whatsoever can call us at 248-658-3310. We encourage everyone to come out and vote on November 5th. Thank you. Ms. Christ. Thank you. Um, I have nothing this evening. Ms. Paul Yenman, thank you for uh, being uh, with us this evening as well. Um, just a, a couple of quick items. This Friday is the State of the City at 8 a.m. Um, at 1025, there it is, at Farina's, presented by the Berkeley Area Chamber of Commerce for Berkeley Area Chamber of Commerce Month. That's a perfect time uh, to, to do that. Um, some local business owners will be awarded and hear what's going on um, in our seating with uh, some of our neighbors as well. And as the clerk mentioned, uh, November 5th is Election Day. Uh, we had incredible voter turnout at our last elections, and I certainly anticipate um, high resident engagement as well uh, in a couple weeks on Tuesday, and, and that's certainly what we hope for. That's what we strive for, um, and it is a point of pride. Please do your homework. Find out who best supports your vision and make your voices heard um, on November 5th so that you can have a say in, in what happens in our community now and moving forward. That is all I have. Uh, to everything else has already been mentioned. I don't need to um, repeat. With that, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Motion made by Mayor Pro Tem with support from Council Member Hennen. Anyway, disagree? No, seeing none. Ms. Mitchell, would you please call the roll? <laughs> Hennen? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Turbrack? Yes. Our meeting is adjourned. Thank you.